Hi and welcome to Hi Who and in this video we'll be unwinding and taking things a little bit more casual. Sometimes you might not be in the mood to devour an intense 12 plus hour long game. You might just want to sit back and do something a little bit more casual to take your mind off things. So in this video we'll be taking a look at one of those games. The game I want to talk to you about is Nason C, a first person puzzle platformer slash walking simulator made by French developer Le Mars A5. The premise of the game is pretty simple. You play Lucy, and from the first 60 seconds, the game says Lucy is lost, and lost she sure is. The game is a combination of exploration of these rather big, windy alien interiors. And then you have these rooms which require Lucy to move lights to open and close pathways to then make her way to the next area. Sometimes these rooms aren't puzzles, but more fast-paced platforming segments, which require Lucy to follow a light and jump in succession. Excuse the pun here, but some of these segments are pretty black and white. And I'm not talking about difficulty, as some of them can get pretty difficult. Unlike a lot of walking simulators, Nason C actually has a fail state, generally falling to your death, and you will die a lot in this game. But the reason why these puzzles and platforming segments are black and white is because they kind of sometimes feel forced and a bit out of place from a game design point of view. Now I understand that this is a walking simulator and the fact that they've added game elements makes it more gamey, but from a game point of view, being the walking simulator, the strongest part of this game is the exploration of this giant sci-fi structure you are lost in. However, these rooms felt like they were constructed to make the game, well, more gamey. Not that they were bad, I actually really, really enjoyed them. Some of them fit really well, like jumping on the square blob things that were falling down the walls. And some of those really abstract squares that would appear and move as you interacted with them. But a few others felt way too ordinary in comparison to the rest of the game, which is rather abstract. And I felt like I had played them before and they were rather familiar from maybe other platforming games, let's say Mirror's Edge, for example. These platforming parts are fairly simple, and the main mechanic of these bits was the use of breathing. As you are running, a little circle will appear, and all you have to do is simply click and Lucy breathes, preventing her from hyperventilating, slowing down, and obscuring her vision from the lack of oxygen. Which on the surface is a pretty simple mechanic, but it plays really nicely in the more abstract levels later on. Really exaggerating how lost and traumatized Lucy is feeling, it's the parts where Lucy is more lost than ever and more confused and disorientated, the breathing will become more rapid, and it's kind of nice to see a mechanic playing into the only character development you might have with a silent protagonist. Whilst it's fairly mundane, if you think about it, she is scared and you are helping her breathe every bit to get the hell out of there. The exploration, like I said, is the strongest and most satisfying part of this game. The act of getting lost and finding a new route whilst being lost is the major reason why I actually like this game. It kind of plays upon the visual concept of what is a linear path. You might be going down what you think might be the wrong route. Next minute you see a little save icon indicating to you that you've gone into the next area. Whilst this game is incredibly linear, it sure as hell doesn't feel that way. The game's environments are a combination of these giant open abstract alien chasms and then you have these tight claustrophobic inducing hallways. The illusion and placement of light really obscures your expectations of what you are to expect from your next turn or room. Nothing in Nason C is straightforward in the sense of conventional level design. Being, let's say, I might walk into a house knowing that there will be at least some bedrooms, bathrooms, a kitchen, and a lounge room. If you were to take that house and then, let's say, make it Nason C, Nason C kind of flips your assumptions of what is in that house, and that's kind of how this game operates. You don't exactly know what's around the next corner. But I can purely recommend the game for this reason. But a whole other reason why I love this game is because Nason C is so goddamn gorgeous. Like, I mean, I think this has to be one of the most beautiful games I have ever played. And I can't say that I've played or seen many games like this aesthetically. Even some of the screenshots I have snapped are amazing. It just works. Along with the visuals, another thing that exaggerates your experience with this game is the ambient soundtrack that plays whilst you're trying to find your way through these areas. A lot of the time when you first reach a new room, some dull sound will softly fade in, but slowly but surely it will become this emotive sci-fi-esque ambient tune. And it really encapsulates the notion of being alone. And it's not sad by any means, it has a very warm feel to it actually, and it's probably due to the deep warm source synths that are being played whilst you are generally in awe of these beautiful landscapes. The notion of being alone, I guess, comes down to the whole point of the game. If you go to the developer's website, there is kind of a rationale in the game. They say, and I quote, The main idea behind the game is to make the player appreciate the loneliness, the feeling of being lost in a gigantic unknown universe, and to be marveled by the beauty of this world. A world that seems to be alive, leading the player, manipulating them, and playing with them for any reason. 
and that statement really rings true for how this game is presented. If you really want to zone out and experience something intriguing and refreshing, something to go to and not really use your brain much, then this is a game to play. You are more sightseeing than doing anything else, and sometimes that's all you need after a long day of work. The narrative isn't really that set in stone either, it's one of those games which it's more the player's journey which is bestowed upon them. The game does have an ending, and it does also have a boss battle chase thing which felt very odd to me and very out of place. But nevertheless, it's one of those games which isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. As cheesy as it may be to say, it's a fantastic journey to actually take. Now the game sells for around $15, and personally, as you can tell, I think it's worth that price. I've played it a few times with giant gaps in between, and every time I do play it, it's a refreshing experience. However, if you are on the fence, put this up on your wish list and buy it on discount. The game is best experience with the lights out and a cold bevy in hand. This game has become easily one of my favourite walking simulators purely due to its beautiful imagery and the interesting level designs, so pick this one up if you can. I can understand that this might not be for everyone though, as it's an interactive gaming like artwork. It really plays upon the player to have an imagination and soak in the world that the developers have created. So please, tell me your thoughts on what you think of this game in the comments below. If you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, hit the like and sub button. Until next time, this is Shorty Maurice from Haihu. Thanks for watching.